And, you know, we just went through a town branding for the first time. We had a, a town flag designed for the first time. And everything was absolutely based and inspired by Pelzer's mill history as a true mill town. I mean, everything built in that town was built for the mill, for the mill workers, everything. It was totally planned out, everything. Uh, there was nothing there before but a farm. And uh, we want to identify as a mill town. That's one of the reasons I called my theater company Mill Town Players uh, in tribute to that textile past. And anything that we do in terms of public spaces, we want to capitalize on that. And that's our roots. It's who we are. It's our identity. And so we've got three historic buildings that are owned by the town in Pelzer, which are the old gym built in 1922, the old hospital, which was formerly a library or a lyceum built in around 1890, and then our community building. We're not really sure when it was built. It used to be an old um, skating rink. And part of our goals for this year are to find ways to start improving all three of those historic properties. Pelzer had gorgeous buildings, beautiful buildings, as did the rest of us that were torn down. I mean, think of that. Or burned. Or burned down, burned to the ground. Gorgeous buildings you couldn't find anywhere else in the state. Beautiful, unique architecture. And uh, just a few remain. So it's important that we save them, restore them, and capitalize on them as something that helps uh, folks identify who we are. And we worked with a local graphic um, design company out of Anderson. Lunchbox Creative, and we worked hand in hand with them, had public forums, and tried to figure out what is the Pelzer town flag going to look like because, first of all, it had never been done officially. And I knew that would be the most challenging thing to figure out and what most people would respond to most passionately. You know, how do you represent what Pelzer is, has been, and will be? And so, like, like uh, West Pelzer, we were drawn to the the light blue to represent um, the proximity to the river. We also wanted to go with the color indigo since uh, our founding was a part of the greater state. People came here to form Pelzer. Pelzer was not formed by Pelzerites. Pelzer was formed by South Carolinians. And so on our flag, we do have that light blue background. We have two thin stripes on the sides in that uh, indigo color representing the two mills, the upper and the lower mill, and also symbolic of the smokestacks that folks remember seeing before they were uh, torn down or, or, or burned down. And then in the center, we have this gear, which we took directly from one of the, uh, the mills. It's, and it represents, the, of course, the mills and the industrialism of our mill town. And then on the front of that is like a white acorn with white oak leaves growing out of it. You know, there's a lot of white oak trees around Pelzer. And when I was doing my research, I looked at the family crest of the Pelzer family, Francis Pelzer. And on it, I found acorns. And I thought to myself, you know what? That is kind of like Pelzer, something small that has the potential for greatness, that has greatness inside of it. And so I took that idea with the sprouting leaves which represent future growth. And we made the, the image white, just like the white palmetto on the indigo field of the state flag. And I'm really proud of the way it turned out. I mean, it's very unique. We followed all the, um, the rules of good flag design. You know, I learned a lot from, from Blake, and um, I'm really proud of it. So we passed that last month, and now we're gonna um, be selling some merchandise. <laughs> Mugs. <laughs> Stickers, hats, t-shirts, tumblers, anything you want, Pelzer, I'm going to sell it to you.